I'm Jordan Klebanoff, and I'm a minimally invasive gynecologic surgeon here with Mainline Health. Endometriosis is a fairly common, yet I think often undiagnosed or underdiagnosed gynecologic condition that really creates a state of chronic inflammation for people that causes typically the hallmark symptoms of painful periods or pain with sex. Um, what I think important for you to know and for patients that may have this condition is that there are other conditions or problems that can be related to endometriosis that I think aren't as well known. So other things I would want people to look out for if they are suffering from endometriosis would not only be the classic symptoms of painful periods, pain with intercourse, but also pain with bowel movements during their menstrual cycle, pain with urination during their menstrual cycle, pain that's become so persistent that it's actually even in between periods. Also also endometriosis can cause a lot of GI symptoms, so things like abdominal bloating and distension during your menstrual cycle. All of these I think are under-recognized symptoms of the disease, and so having a high index of suspicion and understanding what it can cause can help lead to an early diagnosis. Typically, most people tend to be affected by endometriosis during their reproductive years. So as long as you're having a menstrual cycle, which can be from your teenage years to your mid to late 40s or even early 50s, you potentially could still be suffering from endometriosis. There is some evidence to suggest that people even after menopause can unfortunately still be suffering from endometriosis. So truthfully, people of all ages can be suffering from this disease process. My advice to you would be that as soon as you start to feel any symptom that you feel is impacting your quality of life, it's probably the right time to talk to your gynecologist. To diagnose the condition, unfortunately, the only way to truly confirm the condition is through surgery. But we can use a lot of indirect markers to be more or less reassured that someone may have endometriosis. So there is a role for imaging studies like pelvic ultrasounds and MRIs. But unfortunately, most people that have this disease have what's called superficial endometriosis, meaning that you can essentially have a completely normal pelvic ultrasound or MRI and absolutely still have endometriosis. So once your provider is confident that you are suffering from that disease, then the question becomes, what are the right steps for management? And really, in my opinion, all of that should be focused on improving someone's quality of life. So typically my recommendation is to decide between either medical management of the disease or start with surgical management of the disease followed by medical management. We know that there is a role for surgery for endometriosis, but unfortunately this disease is not curable. So surgical removal of the disease or excisional surgery, which is what I practice, can certainly help with symptoms and quality of life, but there's always the potential that those symptoms and the disease could come back. So there are medical strategies to try to minimize the risk of that disease coming back after surgery that you also could start with before surgery. The most benign or non-hormonal management strategies would include medications like Advil or ibuprofen, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, again with the idea being that we can decrease inflammation since we believe that so many of the symptoms are related to the inflammation that's going on. If that does not work, then it's reasonable to progress to what's called hormonal suppression. So sometimes that can be standard forms of birth control that we can use to suppress the disease process. But other times I have to use different kinds of hormones that aren't truly birth control in an effort to try to medically suppress the endometriosis. It's when those treatment options fail that surgery becomes a much more realistic and reasonable option. For anyone suffering from endometriosis, the one thing I can say confidently is that you should be talking with your provider about a minimally invasive surgery. There really is no reason to need to have an open or abdominal surgery for endometriosis. And then when you're specifically talking about how to surgically manage the condition, there's really two schools of thought. There's what's called ablating the disease, which is essentially through surgical instruments burning the tissue to stop the endometriosis from being inflammatory and being active versus doing what I practice, which is called excisional surgery. So that would involve actually cutting this disease out of the body and restoring normal anatomy. Adenomyosis, I think, is an even more under-recognized or misunderstood condition. Physiologically, it's the exact same disease process that's going on, but instead of being outside of the uterus, the endometriosis has actually invaded into the muscle of the uterus. Many of the symptoms can be similar to endometriosis, but the hallmark symptoms of adenomyosis are extremely heavy and painful periods. My advice to you would be that if you think you're suffering from either of these conditions, the first step should be to talk with your gynecologist. We here at Mainline Health also have providers that specialize in these conditions and do have the ability to work with a multi-specialty care team to provide comprehensive care for these conditions. 
For more information, call 1-888-876-8764 or visit MainlineHealth.org slash endometriosis.